Congratulations on your new acquisition. If you understand these words, you're well on your way to enjoying your new life as a language user. The rare creature with the ability to read, write, listen, speak, and above all think in language. You've acquired a powerful new toolkit. You'll be amazed by what it can do. It's so powerful that you must use caution if you are to continue your family's long and successful tradition of adapting. In this quick start video, I'll show you how to have fun with your new language kit without causing undue harm. Maybe you acquired language thinking it would help you communicate with others. Now that you have it, you've probably noticed that it changes how you think. Before language, you were always very here and now. You could only think about what was right in front of you. With language, you can be there and then. Which there? Any there? In far off lands or the many lands of make believe? With words, you can construct whole universes or zoom around ours from any angle. Language is your visa to everywhere, real or imaginary. There's really no place you can't go if you're traveling by language. And which then? Any then. You can visit the near and far past and future. About the past, there is a real one. You can try to visit it, but not just. You can also visit imaginary pasts. About the future, there isn't a real one yet. So any future you can imagine is a speculation a guess. Your guesses can be very far from the mark. That's a challenge if you want to keep adapting. Adaptations have always been guesses about the future. Your eyes, for example. They're on the front of your head, just where you need them for moving forward. Now close them. Notice that with your language kit up and running, you can still see what's ahead of you. Now can you see a purple monster with the Eiffel Tower for a nose? A chicken in a tutu dancing on cheesecake? The whole universe spinning like a basketball on the tip of your finger? Well, there you go. You can see things that aren't real, which is cool for entertainment, but dangerous for adaptation. You can get off, but you can also get off track about reality. As easy as it is for your senses to throw you off, language is much more slippery. Any word can mean many things. Line up a bunch of words and you'll be sliding all over the place. And you'll be able to give yourself pep talks for full steam ahead, flying fast towards reality's brick walls. If you're careful, you can use language to imagine real future threats and avoid them. And you can anticipate real future opportunities and profit off of them. Language enables us to be more visionary than any other creature. That's the good news. The bad news is that you can now focus on imaginary threats and opportunities with all your might, which is a lot of might if you're a leader or even just a follower. A languageless creature can't kill millions to please an imaginary deity or fight an imaginary threat, but we can. Now that you're tooled up, you can be more visionary and more delusional than any other creature. Strings of words only make sense because you know how to connect them. You read between the words, the lines, and the storylines. With your language skills, you'll get so good at reading between things that you'll be doing it everywhere. You'll read between the lines of reality to some hidden reality. It will feel like you live in two worlds, and in a way you do, the world of your senses and the world of words, concepts, beliefs, and convictions. But beware, you'll love how language frees you to escape into fantasy, but make sure to come back or you'll fail to adapt. No matter what you imagine with your words, reality always prevails in the end. What do you get when you cross feelings with language? You get language that rationalizes your feelings. What do you get when you cross self-preservation with language? You get language that reassures, that convinces you that you're preserved. Language users often comfort themselves with soothing fantasies, magical thinking, and self-aggrandizing pep talks. It can be just the motivation they need to keep trying, or it can be disastrous. 
The instinct to survive is strong. The instinct to alleviate fear through encouraging words is stronger. That's especially true because, have you noticed this? With language, reality can get uncomfortably real. You can imagine all the real threats that other creatures can't foresee, and you can remember all the traumas that other creatures forget. Your cat isn't up all night reliving some kick from 10 years ago or worrying about its foreseeable death, but from time to time you might be. We should have to earn licenses to use language. It's that powerful and prone to maladaptive use. There is no language license, so please use your new toolkit wisely. Wisely? Now, what does that mean? Wisdom is adaptation under the influence of language. It's your ability to continue adapting well, even with wild, language-fueled possibilities flooding your mind. Wisdom is your ability to weigh imaginable possibilities realistically, giving more weight to some, less weight to others. It would be great if you could acquire wisdom the way you acquired language, but it doesn't work that way. People get language and then have to grow their own wisdom out of it. Unfortunately, it's way easier to grow delusion than wisdom. It's easy to get wisdom on practical matters, the kind where if you don't get it, reality smacks you down quickly. There are plenty of professions in which failure to recognize the difference between fantasy and reality will cost you quickly. Surgery, car repair, or tree trimming. In other pursuits, not so much. Politics, philosophy, and religion are fun playgrounds. But watch out. Since there's no immediate pushback, you can lose your grip on reality. You can end up in it for the glorious fantasies and way off track. Before language, you could get some adaptive advantage by deceiving others. Camouflage, for example. Faking out your neighbor. Now that you're among language users, you can trick others like never before and be tricked by them. You might end up saying whatever's popular with your neighbors just to get along. People can be as unrealistic as they have to just to get along with others. That's how we get whole tribes of language users steering proudly toward disaster. Make believe wisely and no one gets hurt. Fantasy is fun, so go ahead, knock yourself out. Imagine all sorts of possibilities. Fantasize about being the winner, rich, famous, popular, sexy, the alpha whatever at any game. Fantasize about being the wisest one in a crowd of dummies or a member of the only tribe God likes. Enjoy all the fictions made possible by language, and there are many. Act on your fictions indiscriminately at your own peril. Now that you have language, you're going to have to get a whole lot better at distinguishing fantasy from reality, or you'll have a great time for a short time and flame out. End of the line for you and your lineage. And here's the treat. The better you get at distinguishing fantasy from reality, the further out into fantasy you can go without putting yourself at risk. If you're really clear on the difference between fantasy and reality, there's no fantasy you can't indulge. So go wild with your new toolkit, but remember, in the end, reality always wins. Better to align with it than to think language frees you to wriggle out of it.